Hello, 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 everyone. Uh, we are coming at you live here uh, on all the all the in, in every channel of the internets. Um, super, super excited. So, Adnan Iqbal, one of the founders and the CEO here at Luma, welcome to Digital Health on Air. And today we'll be discussing how to create uh, digital transformation initiatives that aren't just a lot of fluff and initiatives for the sake of initiative, but that really, really drive um, true impact both on the patient front, on the staff front, and then of course uh, for the organization and, and, and the business. Uh, this is one of our um, early uh, uh, digital health on air episodes. And so I am incredibly, incredibly grateful uh, to have Dr. Turin Kapoor here join us. Uh, we lovingly call him TK. TK is uh, a, a, a physician, he's a caregiver, he's a phenomenal leader. He has all the words in his title, digital transformation officer, I'm sure AI will come in there, although he has some thoughts about that that, that are really fun, and I'm sure he'll share that with us. Uh, but he is a uh, great person. Um, a, 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 um, I, I've gotten to know him many, over the time over the past couple of years, and so great dad, great husband, caregiver, and most importantly, um, just speaks the truth, uh, speaks very candidly, and, 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 and has a lot of interesting things to say. So I always come out uh, better, smarter, sharper. Every time we hang out, and anytime I'm, I'm fortunate to hear him speak, uh, it is a, a real treat. So, so thank you, thank you, thank you, TK, for joining us. Uh, thank you so much. Very, very kind words, and uh, let's uh, hope not to disappoint with something insightful. But I'm running out of smart things to say. So let's see. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> well, uh, I'll, 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 I'll toss up. I'll, I'll toss up a softball here. Tell us about 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 Virtua <laughs> and your role there. Um, just, just to get us warmed up. And, and I think that'll help to help set the context for the things we'll dive into together. Yeah, sure thing. Uh, so to the audience, for those of you not familiar with Virtua Health, uh, like virtual without the L, uh, we actually were Virtua before virtual and all of that digital stuff started to happen. Um, been in the community here in the Southern part of New Jersey. So really like the same latitude as Philadelphia. And uh, so about a, just a little shy of a $3 billion integrated delivery network. We do most of it. You know, uh, cardiac surgery, transplant, uh, all the way from one extreme of tertiary, quaternary to hardcore community health worker uh, work and primary care and, and everything in between. So that that's a little bit about us. Awesome. And so digital help on air, we're talking about digital transformation. You are the chief digital transformation officer. Um, you know, what, what does that mean for you and, and, and how do you really approach it? All right, so let, let's get one of these buzzwords out of the way, right? That that's the first piece. Uh, buzzword kill is is what we're going to call this. So, so, what in the world do we mean by digital? Uh, you know, there's a graphic that if you search, and I I think Plum Logics has it, but I think a number of other folks have have created something similar. Whenever I hear the word digital, I always say, "Time out. What part of digital are we talking about?" So, there's digitization, which is fundamentally at a score rate, turning analog into ones and zeros. There's digitalization, which is the process of adapting your workflows to the capability of being digital or digitized. And then there's digital transformation, and that is fundamentally changing the business. I spend a good part of my time on the right-hand side of that progression. Uh, our CIO, who's super deep and I do not envy his job because he's got really hard things to work on as well. He spends a lot of his time on that left side of it. And together we're two in a box is how, is, is how we approach it. Okay. Very helpful. I, I, I love that framing. I think that's, 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 that's a, a super helpful visual um, for folks as they think about um, really what is true transformation. And so, uh, you know, a, a, a lot of your um, think of like your peer group organizations, right. Um, regional centers of excellence like yourself, academic medical centers, other large health systems, integrated delivery networks. Um, we're seeing a vast majority of them today use Epic as their core EHR. Uh, many will use Epic um, in, 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 in the future. Um, and so if you think about the EHR, right? EHR being a core part of a, a health mm -hmm. system's digital footprint, um, you know, sh sh share with us as, as um, your thoughts on this, what, what I think is a must have commodity, uh, but really, um, how do you think about the HR in, 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 in the spectrum of, you know, you mentioned to the right uh, in terms of digital transformation, like what role does that have to play? Um, well, let's, let's start there and then I'll, I'll yeah. have some follow-ups. Yeah, I mean, whether you want to call your your enterprise EHR foundational, um, I mean, the way I kind of think about it is I-beams. Yeah, like what, is your, what, is your, uh, 
what is your return on investment in I-beams? Well, if you don't have I-beams, you, you, you don't have a structure that is supporting everything you want to do. Do you want to make sure your I-beams are fully built out, fully utilized, all of those things? Absolutely, 100%. But on top of that, then you also have drywall. And then you have furnishings and you have the other pieces. And you know what about all of those things? And that's actually where you tend to have a lot more interaction between one of the three consumer sets in healthcare. And uh, let me just pause there because I think that's worth dissecting for a second. I think there are three consumer sets in healthcare and we don't talk about them all at the same time. And because of that, one tends to get neglected at the expense of another one or vice versa, it moves around. So the three consumer sets in healthcare you should think about is, of course, your patient consumer, but you need to think about your clinician consumer. And then you have to think about the other non-clinical folks who work in healthcare. So your non-clinical consumers, your, oper your traditional operators, you have to have tools that are good for all three of them. And what has historically happened, and I wouldn't blame this necessarily on EHRs. I think this is just the way sometimes we don't think this all the way through is we do something that's good for one consumer set, but usually because it's at the expense of the, on one of the other consumer sets. So it's a zero sum proposition where I encourage people to take a step back is where can you find those, you know, cliche word, win-win, or in this case, win-win-win, triple wins. That's how I think people should be thinking about it. EHR is a component of that, but there are places where you may want to augment. Super helpful. And uh, that leads me to my next question. You know, I think we, we often have heard um, from folks who have uh, a similar role or title to you, folks who are in the, in the CIO seat, and, and, and you were kind of have to kind of tease out the difference there. Um, that hey, we're we you know we take an epic first approach. The other thing we're hearing now though is like hey, we're not taking an epic only approach. So you know, help us kind of tease tease out like how you guys are thinking about that at Virtua, but across your peer group, you know, what does that mean, and, and how do you think of that in terms of um, the things that you want to tackle that a high priority, high impact, and where where the EHR first. Uh, framing works and where it doesn't. I, so, you know, uh, I'll, I'll use an analogy at home. So my wife and I, we have an 11 year old and what we always tell him is, well, yes, you should use the toys you have first. Uh, but he says, but then there's new toys. And this is specifically a Lego conversation that happens all the time, right? So yes, you have enough Lego blocks perhaps to build a lot of things, but there's new Legos out there. But what are we trying to, I, I think the real question is, what is the problem you're trying to solve? And then how crucial is it that you solve it as fast as possible? When it comes to communicating with our patient and the entire premise that, you know, we started thinking about this, especially that led us with patient communication, communi patient engagement was we weren't just competing with other health systems. We thought saw ourselves with, from at least a, an SMS messaging, we were competing with dentists, veterinarians, chiropractors, hairdressers, et cetera. Because people literally are saying, I can have a two-way text message conversation with any of these small business owners, but I cannot do the same thing with my multi-billion dollar health system. Sure, you know, can our native system do some of it? And will it continue to be able to build out more robust capabilities? Absolutely. What is speed to execution worth? In our case, it's worth a lot, right? We're hyper-competitive market, hyper-competitive market. And... And so therefore that, that weighed very, very heavily into our calculations. Super helpful. Um, you, I, I love, the, I love, I love the, the, the Lego blocks analogy. And so you have many, many Lego blocks uh, at, at Virtua and, and I'm sure other systems of, of your shape, size and feel do it as well. Like you have an HR, you have a call center, you have CRM, revenue cycle, telehealth, payments, like all these different Lego blocks. Um, you know, how, how do you, as you think of, um, where you are in the next couple of years, especially operating in a, in a hyper-competitive and probably increasingly competitive mm -hmm. environment, how do you start thinking about putting those Lego blocks together in, in, in the optimal way? So, you know, and going back to this, this EHR first approach, again, I, I don't have a problem with the concept. Actually, we like it, uh, that EHR first concept. It makes a ton of sense. But we also have to, instead of, taking it from an infrastructure first approach. This is my infrastructure and I'm going to use my infrastructure to solve this problem. No one in retail does it that way. And, and so you have to think about it. What is the problem that the consumer and this specifically situation, this patient consumer is, is facing? 
that they were trying to get. And actually, this is where you educated us because you really started to talk about, well, health systems want engagement. Consumers want success. And, and I mean, if you think about it, like when I work with Amazon or I don't work at, when I shop on Amazon, I'm not really looking for like a ton of like I'm looking for a ton of engagement, right? I'm I'm looking for batteries that show up as soon as possible. Now, there are times that I want to really understand a product and shop it and all of that type of stuff. All right, that's a different scenario. When people want quick, dirty, fast, and transactional, you give them their answer at the moment, at the time. Yes, I love our portal. Our patients love our portal. But they don't love their portal for everything. And, you know, so think about this way, text messaging. For Think about your bank. We have people download their bank. I have my bank app downloaded. But I have to get a good return on investment as a consumer to have that bank app downloaded. And what is the return on investment? Well, now I can actually deposit checks right through my bank app. And it's a great return on investment. But if I just want to know my balance, I just want to be able to text you. All right. So what what is the amount of friction point that we have through. And it's not one suits all. It's where I am at that moment. I am different types of consumers at different times of the day. And if you're willing to be multimodal, then you have to be multimodal. You can't say we're going to be multimodal and only be unimodal. And I, and that's just maybe more of a personal opinion. No, I love that. I think um, that, that that is spot on. Uh, you know, I think often when folks are thinking about their digital front door, or digital continuum, fortunately, folks are thinking about it beyond just a front door. And I think in, in past conversations, we've talked about it's the side door, the back door, the garage door. Like the I will not door. use, you know me, that I will not use that term <laughs> front door, right? Because I can't remember the last time I went through the front door of my house. Uh, the only purpose of my front door of our house is to have packages drop off and me to ignore our salespeople. So um, no, I'm never going through my front door. <laughs> so, but yes, sorry. No, no, I, 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 I love that framing when we talked about it. And so you have, a, I, I think this is really important. And this is a nuance that I, I know people have started to think about, but aren't there yet. It's like folks are often not thinking about the consumer at different points in their journey, but you're adding, I think a very, very important and thoughtful layer, which is like, not just where someone is in their own healthcare journey or, or, or their broader wellness and success journey, but even time of day, right? That that really matters. Um, and, and having the right set of Lego blocks available to a consumer um, to meet them where they are, how they are, how they're thinking about it is incredibly important. And then I love what you say is like, this is not about that consumer alone at the expense of the other stakeholders. Like you have the other two stakeholders that you have yes. to also like reconsider in terms of where they are and their workflow and in their day. And I think just to add on to what you said, you know, and we've talked about this on a piece of paper, we always draw a consumer journey from left to right. It is three-dimensional and it is multimodal and it is actually... Sometimes I'm actually here and sometimes I go back here and sometimes I'm over here. So it's not one point of entry and that, and that hyper-personalization is where we get, I know that if I get a text message to remind me to do something at the wrong time, it's not really serving a purpose for anyone. It has to be at the time window. It has to be at the time window when I'm actually going to respond to it. So if, so we really need to be thoughtful of this, of when do we send a message? And each of our consumers is different. And let's not even talk about demographics. We have to be well beyond demographics, psychographics. In New Jersey has a really interesting set of psychographics. Uh, we have the highest proportion of patients who obtain healthcare in the United States who do not have a primary care doctor. So then if you were to say, well, if I want to get those patients involved, what do I need to do? Open more primary care offices? No, they've already declared that I'm not going to use a primary care physician. So I need to figure out, well, where can I engage with you that I can get you into my, you know, engage into my system. And I think the same thing goes with communications. If we say you can only get your text messages at this time, all right, but it's going to sit there and I'm not going to get a confirmation back. And an unfilled slot is a really bad outcome for all parties involved. Yeah, absolutely. And lost treatment opportunity. Um, lost treatment opportunity for someone else, and of course, um, missed care, right? Which is, will have all the all, all the health outcome and public health impacts and, and costs to it. Yeah, yeah, and um, and 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 then I side on to that. It's not just with an appointments. There's also now the opportunity to help people complete their care gaps. 
because the mm -hmm. way we do care gaps today is we come in, we have you say, well, you have to come into the office so we can talk to you about your care gaps. I already talked to you about your care gaps. What sometimes you just need is a friendly little reminder to get your care gap completed. And well, let's message you at a time and a place at which you're going to react to that. This is not new thinking outside of healthcare. Right? I mean, they're hyper personalized and figure out this is when this person's going to answer. We're just hitting the beginning of this in healthcare. If you get good at this, you beat the rest of the market. And this is what I call outrunning the bear. You don't always have to outrun the bear, but you can be better. As long as you're better than the other people around you, then you got a lot more time to figure out how to get away from the bear. Right. Right. Yeah. No, I, I, I love that. I love that. And that um, we've all been guilty of not being great patients. And so those like thoughtful nudges at the right time in the right way can really be incredibly impactful on a personal patient level, individual patient level. But if you think of an entire population trying to manage um, super, super impactful. Absolutely. Okay. Great segue here. Um, we, we've talked about some important concepts here. We've talked about, you know, what's, what's a buzzword versus what's real, you know, at Virtua, uh, you have all sorts of competing priorities. You 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 really focus on uh, high impact. Uh, so walk us through some you know some real meaty tangible initiatives that you focused on or are focused on that really take you know the different themes you talked about in terms of it's called digital transformation at the highest level where you really put things in action and then assemble Lego blocks to to really drive the right impact for the three stakeholders. If we had to limit does it feel like we're working on a gazillion things? Yes, because we are working on a gazillion things. If I had to try to bucket them into the top three, it's access, digital access. And, and I think that's an important word to dissect because access doesn't necessarily mean access to an appointment. It's I, I We look at access as, <clears throat> I'm looking for access to an answer. And that answer may be, something as simple as what time do I show up? What's the address? When should I leave for this appointment? But sometimes it is an appointment. So people don't always want an appointment. They're willing to tolerate an appointment as a surrogate to get an answer. But it's access, but access to what? It's around resiliency and talking about that triple consumer base because we've done some great things for our patient consumers, but we really have mucked it up for our internal consumers, our clinicians, and our staff. And then the, the third piece is outcomes. Yes, you always want new business, but there is so much business to be had with the people who've already walked in your door that you just got to finish the loop with them. And and so if, if I had to bucket it, that's how I bucket in those three global priorities. Awesome. And I know you had, we, we talked about, um, uh, care gaps in particular, and you guys have done a, a, a lot of work recently around um, a, a couple of care gaps in particular. Like, quick data you've seen there, early success, early wins you've seen there. Yeah, really, really stunning numbers that we were hoping to see success, but we didn't think we were going to see this. So we we had uh, initial cut slice of our data. We looked at patients forty five to sixty, who um, pages uh, ages forty five to sixty who um, who went through and had um, who didn't have a colonoscopy. And we said to them, yeah, you got some of the data here on the right-hand side. We'll, we pinged them and said, why don't you, we know you're not going to come in for it right now. So at least at a minimum, why don't you just do a Cologuard test, test with us? And so we partnered with Exact Sciences and we said to them, hey, just send us a sample. Well, we gave them an option. Either send us your result or send us a, a sample or specifically send Exact Sciences a sample. Of the 30, so we were about almost 13,000 people we pinged. Of them, 3,500 of them result, uh, sent us um, uh, responses back. So now 900 of the 3,500 actually sent us a result. That's actually, first and foremost, really good news. They actually had done something. We just needed to give them a convenient way of getting us a result. So we said, take a picture, send it to us. Great. Now it's in your file. Good. But there were nearly 2,500 people didn't do anything, hadn't done anything with the results. And so therefore, they had sent the sample back. Over 250 of them were walking around positive results. That is hundreds of people walking around with precancerous lesions. Now we're in there. Now we're getting them for their scopes. Uh, and similar, same thing on diabetic retinopathy. Patients, if you have diabetes, you need a retinal scan. It used to be the only way to do it is you have to go to your ophthalmologist, and the ophthalmologist dilate you, look in the back of your eye. Now there's a very simple camera technology that the primary care office can use. You just look in, 15 seconds, it gives you a result. 
100, nearly 150 people walking around with um, diabetic retinopathy, which can actually lead to blindness if um, if it doesn't uh, get right. So these, and these were simple, two digital messages, an initial one and another one followed by uh, six, six weeks later. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I think people will respond to these messages is, is what I think is really important. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you think you talk about, um, delivering to patient or true patient or consumer success, like this is that in action. Yeah. Uh, I know you are a, uh, an emerging TikTok star and, 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 and I, I, I loved, uh, the recent post you had around, um, you know, what problem are we trying to solve? Uh, and then when do we say our solution is good enough? And and, and you've been kind enough to, to share a lot of different um, examples and, and, and ways to think about that. And so uh, as, as we wrap up here and really think about the core problems to solve, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll let you wrap with, um, hey, like we have uh, a lot of healthcare to deliver to more people in the right way at the right time. But as you you know now put on like your, your futurist hat, what do you guess, what do you get most excited about as you think about solving the right problems in the right, right way and doing it good enough. I, I, I think we did cover the one and you may have even heard my voice. There are such gaps in how we are delivering care today, not because we have bad intent, just because we don't always have the right engagement. Learning the techniques that other industries have been so successful with, bringing them into healthcare, that cons true consumer is a mindset. Digital is a subset of that. But we're actually now able to, based on some of the results we show, we just shared, some of these, they're not super expensive techniques to engage. People were saving lives and having meaningful impact on people's quality of lives. It, it's, it's probably been some of the most fulfilling work we've done, and personally as a clinician. Well, thank you, TK, for your leadership, uh, for your work at Virtua. Uh, and for the impact that you and your teams are driving uh, across all three stakeholders that you referenced. Uh, this has been super fun for me uh, and I'm sure for, for our audience. So so thank you, thank you, thank you for, for joining us. Uh, for all of those uh, tuning in, thank you for sharing your time with us uh, and we'll see you next time uh, as part of Digital Health On Air. Thanks, TK. Take care all. Bye-bye.